little bit about myself. My name is Zach Blinkensop. I'm the owner of a company called Digital Roofing Innovations. I'm a licensed general contractor and roofing contractor in over nine states. I'm also a U.S. military veteran. So I promise you came to the right place to get your information. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go over the summary of the video. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is actually removing the old roofing. So any of the old shingles and all the stuff that goes underneath, we're gonna talk about removing that. Then we're gonna talk about the decking and we're talking about inspecting of the decking. And then we're gonna talk about the actual underlayment that you're gonna be using on top of the decking. So decking, then underlayment. Next, we're gonna talk about and I'm gonna be showing you how to install the different components on the roofing system. So as we go through this video, I'm gonna actually have you guys up here with us when we are installing different sections of the roof to include today, we're gonna to be talking about starter, we're gonna be talking about drip edge, we're gonna be talking about uh, the different shingles that we're gonna be installing. Um, we're gonna be doing mushroom vents on top of this roof today. The new boots that's gonna be going and getting installed and of course the shingles themselves. This is a super complicated roof. It's my back, my business partner, one of his rental houses. So we just had a good opportunity today to do this. But anyway, we're gonna be showing you basically from beginning to end on how to re-roof a house for a roofing project for asphalt shingles. Okay, so during the tear off, now we didn't get a whole lot of video during the tear off just because first off, my guys got out here early. They're down there hanging out with my dog. I don't know if you can see them down there, but uh, they actually got started a little bit early this morning and I had a couple things to do, but basically we tore off the roof completely and all we have all this down here, which is bad decking that was replaced. Uh, then we got all the, you want to you want to tear everything off all the way down to the decking. So never leave uh, any type of underlayment down. You want to get rid of all the shingles. You want to get rid of all the old starter you want to replace your drip edge. So you want to go ahead and strip the, uh, the roof all the way down to the, the decking. So what we use is a dump trailer. And so that's where all of this stuff is. It's actually in the dump trailer. One of the things I strongly recommend doing when you are up here is making sure that you're using fall protection. Um, we're not doing any work right now, so that's why I don't have mine on. And this is a very easy to walk the roof. Also recommend putting down tarps down here so anytime that you've got things coming off of a roof, you wanna make sure that you have tarps. And the biggest thing you wanna make sure too is whether you're a contractor or whether you're a homeowner that you're doing your own project, you also wanna make sure that everybody's staying safe below. So you don't want anybody to get hit in the head by anything. Um, you also wanna make sure you're using proper ladder, ladder safety. We have several of those videos on the YouTube channel. And, but the tear off process is pretty easy. All you do is getting rid of all the stuff that was on the roof. So once all that comes off, uh, you can start doing the decking and kind of getting ready to start installing the shingles and your other components. Now there's a few things that you can use for your removal. Here's a asphalt shingle removal tool. So this is a, uh, we'll have a link in the description of this tool that you can use to actually remove shingles of the roof. And then what a lot of people use is just a pitchfork. So this has kind of been a tried and true method for a long time. People use pitchforks. These things work a little bit better, but they're a little bit more expensive. So that's all you need to know about tearing off an asphalt shingle roof. So if there's any roofing contractors out here, so let's go ahead and address this right now. I know you have, you see all these different types of underlayments. If there's any roofing contractors out here, the reason we have these different types of synthetics is this is the house of my business partner. And it's just a real property and we had a bunch of this left over in the garage from other projects. So instead of him going out and buying a bunch of new synthetic, we just installed what we had in the garage. So you have Rhino, Gripright, a few different synthetics. If you're a homeowner out there, just understand this is a type of underlayment we're installing. Before I get into the underlayment, I want to talk a little bit about decking. So as you see down here, we have some bad decking that, that, was, that was taken up. So what you're looking for with decking is if you don't know what decking looks like, it's this. So here is decking on the roof. And so what you're looking for is any soft spots in the decking. So you'll fill soft spots by walking over it. Now, if you're doing this yourself and you're not hiring a company to do this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna either walk, just walk over all your decking and you can normally see, you'll see a discolored area 
And if it looks really soft, do not walk on it. Just sit down next to it, put your hand down. And if it feels soft, what we call that is an unnailable surface. So what you want to do is replace that area of your decking. Now you may have either, you might have tongue and groove, you may have planks, you may have OSB, you may have plywood, whatever you have for your main decking. If you're not going to change out your whole decking, which I recommend not doing, unless you just absolutely have to, find out what decking you have on there. And if you have a question, just take an old board that you pulled up to Lowe's or Home Depot or your local hardware store and have them match that. And then you'll just replace those sections. You either can do full sheets or full boards, or you can cut with a circular saw, or you can use um, any type of cutting method that you want to to match what you have up here. And you can bring it up, tear it off, and then reinstall it. And then next, so once you have all your decking done, then we're gonna start installing your drip edge. And then of course, you're gonna be installing your underlayment. So here we've already got underlayment installed. So again, this is what we call drying in on a project. Again, if we were doing this for a homeowner or for a, like we do a lot of work for the US government, we would be using a uniform underlayment, not all this different kind, but for the sake of this particular project, we just have these different ones installed. So it really doesn't matter. It's all gonna do the same thing. What really matters is how the rest of the material gets installed and how we're gonna do it. So let's move on to our next thing and our roofing install. All right, so before we get started actually installing all this stuff, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about all the different components that we are gonna be installing. Here's my business partner, Chris. You have not seen him much on the channel. Uh, not yet, but you will start seeing him a little bit more often. Uh, I'm obviously the contractor looking person of the business. My Chris, it looks more like he's about to do your taxes or write your will. So uh, anyway, we just got materials delivered now. Chris is also very cheap. So because he's cheap, we're not getting the highest quality materials on the shop because it's his house. It's a, it's, a, it's a rental house. And it's so one of his rental houses. Money. So, but what we have basically is we have our shingles here. So we have a, is this a we got OC Oak Ridge. This is a 30, 30 year or an architectural shingle. Uh, next we have our starter, which is a uh, tri-built. So we're going to be putting the starter along the eaves and the rakes of the roof. And then we have our hip and ridge. Now this is our, uh, all of our shingle products that's gonna be getting put on uh, with that to see what kind of other stuff that we're gonna be installing. So we have our boots. So we got this, your standard metal. This is your three inch. And then we have the smaller boots. As you can see, the gasket is smaller on this one than it is here. So we refer to this one as a one to three, and this one is just our three inch. Now this of course goes up to a larger size if we need to, and you just cut it out there. All right, we have our shank shingles here that we're gonna be using to install. Uh, I think Chris pulled this out of my garage. So there's our fasteners. We are gonna be installing with nail guns versus hand nailing. We recommend doing nail guns. And then the button cap nails is what we use to install the synthetic underlayment. And finally, this has also been sitting in my garage for a long time. We will be installing these mushroom vents on top of the roof. So again, nothing too complicated. I just want to show you all the stuff that we're going to be using. Oh, and finally, we have our, not the not liquid nails. So we have some of our construction adhesive here and hopefully he got some GeoCell. All right, so I've showed you a little bit about, again, the installation process of the roof. We're gonna climb up the ladder right now. We're gonna see what the guys are doing. And we're gonna talk about installing starter and shingles. And that's what we're doing right now. Just coming up the roof. Oh. Mr. Cheapskate Chris is uh, supervising right now. You gotta save the money. And so. Hey. 
One, two, three, four, five, six per nail. Now, in most shingle manufacturers, you only have to install about four. But with you go a six shingle pattern, most of the time you're actually going to get a better seal, and a lot of times the wind rating goes up from 110 miles per hour to 130. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to install these. However, we recommend doing a diagonal pattern when installing these. So again, we're doing six nails per shingle to increase the wind rating. Now, this is how we're installing a pipe boot. The important thing is to come in at the end and make sure that you put caulking on each nail because if you don't caulk the, the top of that boot, or the, excuse me, the nails on the boot, you have a chance of it leaking. Another thing we recommend doing is what's called target patching each protrusion on your roof with ice and water shield and it's exactly what the guys are doing right now. But you want to make sure that there's no rubbing on that rubber gasket because if you have a rubbing on that rubber gasket what's going to happen is is that rubber gasket is actually going to get worn down and so when it gets worn down it's going to lose a lot of its life expectancy because those things really only last about 10 to 15 years so a lot of times your shoot your roof is actually going to outlast your pipe boots because it, it's vitally important that you buy good pipe boots and i recommend at least getting the metal ones or the lead ones they sell some perma boots and stuff like that but on a project like this we recommend having a minimum of that. All right, now this is not the official way to do this, but this is the way that we're doing it on this particular project. So Chris forgot to get to zipper boots. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna cut one of our one to three boots. Actually, it's one of our three inch boots. So you see, we're cutting this right down the middle because the only way of getting this around this power line is to cut it. So we have this boot here that needs to go around. So the way we're gonna do this to make sure it doesn't leak, again, we would never do this for someone else's house or on one of our projects, but since this is Chris's house, we know that it's not gonna leak. Well, what we've done is we've got ice and water shield underneath this, and then we're gonna install this right over the top. All right, so this is where one of our mushroom vents are gonna go. So Chris is gonna model our mushroom vent. And so most of you guys are familiar with mushroom vents. Chris decided not to install ridge vent on this roof just because, again, it's one of his rental houses. And we had extra mushroom vents at the house. So he decided to go ahead and, or excuse me, in, uh, in our shop and decided to install this mushroom vent. So. Here's our hole where the mushroom bin is gonna be going. All right, so as you see, what we're doing is we're taking our ice and water shield and we're gonna target patch around our mushroom vent. So we're cutting right around it. All right, so we're taking the tape off here. So it's gonna help it stick a little bit more since we're doing this target patch here. So again, nothing is requiring you to install ice and water shield like this, but we recommend it. The odds of your vents leaking in the future are gonna be way, way less because anytime you have a penetration in your roof, you're giving it an opportunity of leaking. All right, so you're gonna put your nails through and then of course, make sure that you're gonna be cocking the tops of these nails after you're installing. All 
Right, so we have our ice and water shield now right over the top of our pipe boot. Yeah, so. so this is going to help with any problems that you may have in the future, with any leaks. You get anytime you have penetrations around your roof, there's a chance that it's going to leak. So we want to do everything we can to make sure that does not happen. All right, so the last part we're going to show you how to do on this roof, and it's pretty much going to be the last thing you're going to do on most, especially any type of roof that is a gable roof or just a, your standard hip roof or hip and ridge. So but this is just how you install them. Okay, hey, thanks a lot for clicking on the video and watching it all the way through, hopefully. If you liked the video, give us a big thumbs up. It really helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't subscribed to Digital Roofing Innovations yet, scroll down to the red subscribe button and go ahead and click that and become part of the Digital Roofing Innovations family. Now remember, Digital Roofing Innovations, we believe in using a modern approach with traditional values.